I don't know if asked the question, the following scenario, a guy was being like nice. Can you believe it? People are actually nice. They took out someone's garbage, but he was a little uh, negligent. negligent. And he left the garbage a little bit too far protruding out onto the road. And a car came by, excuse me, and hit the garbage can, causing $2,000 worth of damage to the car. Who pays? The guy who took it out, we'll call him Ruvain, the owner of the garbage can, we'll call him Steve, right? Or does the driver have to suck it up and that's why you have insurance? He's just, we're going to do, no one's obligated. So this is actually connected to the situation which we had before. And that is, what happens if you have a boar bashut or rabin? If you have a boar, if you have something which is dangerous, a pit in a public domain. So based on last week's parsha, and, and, and again, it, it's, it's a Rashi, and it's a Gemara Baba Kama that says, and without the Torah telling you this, it's counterintuitive, which means in many ways it's a You'd never think that. You'd think logically, okay, I dig a pit, any damage it causes, I gotta pay for it. Who digs a pit in a public domain? But the Torah is very clear. You're only obligated if you cause damage to an animal or to a human, not to vessels, not to Caleb. You are exempt, you're putter from damage to Caleb. Meaning, a car is a clee, and therefore, it could be that if this guy is driving his car, what do you mean? Yes, I put the garbage in, in, in a place that I shouldn't have, and it's what's called classic, a barber shoot the rabbi, the person who has a pit in Rashid the Rabbim is exempt from damage that is caused by Kalim. The person, i.e. the driver, believe it or not, needed to be more careful. Is he obligated maybe with De Shamayim in some heavenly tribunal he should pay? Just because a, a human court can't try him? That's, that, that could be the case for those who want to argue that. But he would not be able to, you could not be able to force him to extract money from him because of this interesting case. And what would happen if the guy got injured? Let's say he was injured, he lost work, right? Or he had to pay for an ambulance, or he had to pay for x-rays, right? It's interesting, now that I did a board with the rabbim, and a guy got injured from it, I have to pay for damage caused by a human. Um, because I told you, you pay for damage to a human or to an animal, but this human, though, was in a car. So is that considered damage to the human, or is a car that appears to be um, a little bit unclear? Um, and uh, we have a rule also, just one more principle, is that people don't necessarily pay attention in public areas. And that's the reason why if you cause damage to a person, you're obligated. You'd say, well, the guy should walk where he's driving. The answer is, no, no, no. People don't pay attention when, they dr when they're traveling in public areas. That's true by walking. But by driving, we know you need to pay attention when you're driving. Or else, that's called negligent. That's a, right? You have to pay attention when you're driving. So it could be that when you're driving, other people want to argue, no, no, no. The reason why the Talmud exempted the person um, from Reuven walked into it, tripped into a pit. Why don't we say, Reuven, watch where you're going. It's true, you shouldn't have done a, uh, you shouldn't have done.